What's up, everyone, and welcome to this week's Cybersecurity Weekly, where we review the security events that happened in the last week. As always, I have broken them down in the timeline so you can jump around between the different stories as you see fit. If you find my work valuable, of course, I ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. We start off today with patches. VMware released this week software updates to address two critical security vulnerabilities, CVE 2022-22951 and CVE 2022-22952, both received a CBS score of 10, affecting its Carbon Black App Control platform that could be exploited by a threat actor to execute arbitrary code on affected installations on Windows systems. The Carbon Black App Control is an application that allows listing solutions that is designed to enable security operations teams to lock down new and legacy systems against unwanted change, simplify the compliance process, as well as provide protection for corporate systems. The vulnerabilities were reported by security researcher Jari Jaskelier. Multiple vulnerabilities in VMware Carbon Black App Control were privately reported to VMware. Updates are available to remediate these vulnerabilities to infected VMware products, reads the advisory published by VMware. The issues could be only exploited or could only be exploited by authenticated attackers with high privileges. The first bug, tracked to CVE 2022-22951, is an OS command injection vulnerability in Carbon Black App Control. The issue is due to improper input validation leading to remote code execution. An authenticated high-privileged malicious actor with network access to the VMware App Control administrative interface may be able to execute commands on the server due to improper input validation leading to remote code execution. The second flaw, tracked to CVE 2022-22952, is a file upload vulnerability in VMware Carbon Black App Control. An attacker can trigger the flaw by uploading a specially crafted file. A malicious actor with administrative access to the VMware App Control or Black App Control administrative interface may be able to execute code on the Windows instance where AppC server is installed by uploading a specially crafted file. Impacted versions are 8.5.x, 8.6.x, 8.7.x, and 8.8.x. The virtualization giant addressed the flaws with the release of versions 8.5.14, 8.6.6, 8.7.4, 8.8.2. Our customers are, of course, recommended to install security updates immediately. Next up, Google fixed an actively exploited high severity zero day vulnerability with the release of Chrome 99.0.4844.84 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Google has released Chrome 99.0.4844.84 for Windows, Mac, and Linux users to address a high, this high severity zero day bug, tracked as CVE 2022.1096, exploited in the wild. The CVE 2022-1096 vulnerability is a type confusion in V8 JavaScript engine. The bug was reported by an, anonym, by an anonymous person on uh, 23rd of March 2022. This time, Google has yet to publish technical details about the flaw, um, either or how it was exploited by threat actors in the wild. CV 2022-0609 is the second zero-day vulnerability addressed by the IT giant this year. Um, or 1096. In February, Google fixed. Uh, so yeah, CV 2022 1096 is the second zero day vulnerability addressed by IT giant. In February, Google fixed the high severity zero day flaw track to CV 2022 0609. There's a typo there, which was actively exploited. Google released a Chrome emergency update for Windows, Mac, and Linux to fix the CV 2022 0609 bug. Now, the CVE 2022-0609 uh, day is a use-after-free issue that resided in animation. The bug was reported by Adam Weideman and Clement Ledigny of Google's Threat Analysis Group. The flaw was exploited by North Korea-linked threat actors since uh, going back to January 4, 2022. One could then argue maybe it's the North Koreans that uh, exploited in the wild the 2022-1096, uh, but there's no proof, or there's no information from Google so far. We now move on to attacks, vulnerabilities, and updates. Satellite communication, SATCOM, networks are critical infrastructure for modern society. U.S. and EU agencies warned of possible threats to them. Victor Zora, Chief Digital Transformation Officer at the State Service of Special Communication and Information Protection of the Ukraine, speaking about the Viasat attack, said it was a really huge loss in communications in the very beginning of the war. This week, the European Union, or last week, the European Union, uh, Union Aviation Safety Agency, or EASA, has issued a safety information bulletin to warn of intermittent global navigation satellite systems 
outages near Ukraine, the Ukrainian conflict areas, amid the ongoing conflict. The European agency jamming and or spoofing attacks against GNSS have intensified in geographical areas surrounding the conflict zone and other areas. In some cases, the attacks led to rerouting or even to changing the destinations due to the inability to perform a safe landing procedure. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, also published a joint advisory that warns of possible threats to U.S. and international satellite communications networks. The U.S. agency state intrusions into SATCOM networks poses severe risk in SATCOM network to, uh, providers' customer environments. The mitigation actions recommended by the U.S. agencies to customers and providers... Use secure methods for authentication. Enforce principle of at least of least privilege through authorization policies. Review trust relationships. Implement encryption across all communication links leased from uh, or provided by your SATCOM provider. Strengthen the security of operating systems, software, and firmware by ensuring robust vulnerability management and patching processes, and implement rigorous configuration management programs. You want to monitor logs for suspicious activity. You want to create, maintain, and exercise a cyber incident response plan, resilience plan, and continuity of operations plan. These are things I've been saying since the very beginning. Anonymous claims it has hacked Omega Company, which is the in-house R&D unit of Transneft, the Russia-based state-controlled oil pipeline company. Trans Transneft is the largest oil pipeline company in the world. The hacktivists have stolen 79 gigabytes of emails and published them on the leak site of for the nonprofit whistleblower organization Distributed Denial of Secrets. While the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues and innocent people and innocent people are dying, the anonymous collective is targeting Russian government institutions and private firms. The data leaked as part of Transneft's Omega Company hack contained the email accounts data of company employees. The stolen data includes invoices, equipment technical configurations, and product shipment information. The Omega Company produces high-tech acoustic and temperature monitoring systems for oil pipelines. In June 2021, researchers from Avast warned of the rapid growth of the Dirty Mo botnet, Purple Fox, also known as Purple Fox, Percolor, and Nugget Phantom, which passed more than 10,000 infected systems in 2020 to more than 100,000 in the first half of 2021. Experts define Dirty Mo as a complex malware that has been designed as a modular system. The Windows botnet has been active since late 2017. It has mainly used, or was mainly used, to mine cryptocurrency, but it was also involved in distributed denial of service attacks in 2018. Dirty Mo Rootkit was delivered via mall spam campaigns or served by malicious websites, hosting the Purple Fox exploit kit that triggers vulnerabilities in Internet Explorer, such as CVE 2020-0674, scripting engine memory corruption vulnerability. The operations behind the Dirty Mo botnet rapidly changed since the end of 2020, when the malware authors added a worm module that could increase their activity by spreading via the internet to other Windows systems. Now, Avast researchers provided details of a Dirty Mo module that uses worm-like techniques to allow the threat to spread without user interaction. The Dirty Mo services run as a service host process that starts the Dirty Mo core and executioner processes. The latter manages the malware modules. The executioner loads two modules, the Monero miner and a module for worming replication. The Dirty Mo worm exploits the following vulnerabilities to spread the malware. CV 2019-9082 Think PHP, multiple PHP injection RCEs. CV 2019-2725 Oracle WebLogic Server Async Response Service Deserialization RCE. CV 2019-1458, Wizard Opium, Local Privilege Escalation. CV 2018-0147, Deserialization Vulnerability. CV 2017-0144, Eternal Blue, SMB Remote Code Execution. MS 15-076, which is RCE Allow Elevation of Privilege, Hot Potatoes, Hot Potato Windows Privilege Escalation. Dictionary Attacks Aimed at Microsoft SQL Server Servers, SMB, and Windows Management Instrumentation Services uh, with Weak Passwords. The Worming Module is designed to achieve RCE under administrator privileges and install the Dirty Mo. The key feature of this module is the generation of IP addresses to attack. The malware implements six methods to generate IPs with the help of a pseudo-random generator. 
Hackers leaked a new version of the Conti ransomware source code on Twitter as retaliation of the gang's support to Russia. The attack against the Conti ransomware and the data leak is retaliation for its support for the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. The attack will have a significant impact on the operation of the gang, considering also that many of Conti's affiliates are Ukrainian groups. Recently, a Ukrainian researcher leaked the 60,694 messages, internal chat messages uh, belonging to the Conti ransomware operation after the announcement of the group, or from, by the group, of its support to Russia. He was able to access the database XMMPP uh, chat server of the Conti group. In a second round, the expert leaked the old source code for the Conti ransomware encryptor, decryptor, the, and builder, along with the administrative panel and the bizarre backdoor API. The leaked old Conti ransomware source code is dated September 15th, 2020. The source code for the ransomware is contained in a password-protected archive. Despite the researcher um, not leaking the password, another expert cracked it and then shared it. The public availability of the source code could temporarily destroy the Conti ransomware operation because security experts could perform reverse engineering to determine how it works and develop a working decryptor. On the other side, other threat actors could perform reverse engineering to develop their own version of the threat, a circumstance that opens a wor to worrisome scenarios. Now, the Ukrainian security researcher has leaked newer malware source code from the Conti ransomware operation. The code is dated January 25th, 2021. The code appears to be more recent than the previous leak. According to Bleeping Computer, Conti leaks uploaded the source code for Conti version 3 through Virus Total and shared a link on Twitter. The public availability of the source code could temporarily destroy the Conti ransomware set again because you no know, security experts can't reverse engineer it. Microsoft announced that it's in, that it's investigating claims that the Lapsus cybercrime gang breached their internal Azure DevOps source code repositories and stole data. Over the last months, the gang compromised other prominent companies such as NVIDIA, Samsung, Ubisoft, Mercado, Libre, and Vodafone. On Thursday, March 10th, Lapsus ransomware gang announced they're starting to recruit insiders employed within major technology giants and ISPs. Such companies include Microsoft, Apple, EA Games, and IBM. Their scope of interest include major telecommunications companies such as Claro, Telefonica, and AT&T. The, recently, the actors uh, looked to buy remote VPN access and ask potential insiders to contact them privately via Telegram. They then reward them by paying for the access granted. On Sunday, the Lapsus gang announced uh, to have compromised Microsoft's Azure DevOps server and shared a screenshot for alleged internal source code repositories. One of the repositories contains the source code for Cortana and the Bing project. The government team for response to computer emergencies of the Ukraine, or known as CERT UA, warns of spear phishing messages conducted by UIC 0035 Group, aka Invisi Mole, against Ukrainian state bodies. The messages use an archive name 501 underscore 25 underscore 103 zip, which contains a shortcut file. Upon opening the LNK file or link file, um, an HTA file will be downloaded and executed on the victim's computer. The HTA file contains a VB script code that fetches and decodes the bait file in the malicious program Load Edge Backdoor. Then the backdoor contacts the command and control server to download the uh, and execute other malicious payloads, including Tunnel Mole, more that abuses the DNS protocol to establish a tunnel for malicious purposes, and RC2FM and RC2CL. The load edge backdoor maintains persistence through the Windows registry. Ukraine's CERT also shared indicators of compromise for the recent attacks. The Invisimol group is a Russia-linked threat actor that has been active since at least 2013. ESET experts linked the group to the Gamerodon Russian apt group despite its considering the two crews independent. Performant researchers uncovered a targeted attack leveraging an open source package installer, Chocoletti, to deliver a backdoor Tractus Serpent. The campaign targeted French entities in the construction, real estate, and government industries. Experts believe the attacks were conducted by a sophisticated threat actor. At this time, experts were not able to determine the ultimate objective of the campaign. The threat actor used the Serpent backdoor to remotely control the system's steal sensitive data and deliver additional malicious payloads. The phishing messages uses a weaponized Microsoft Word document masquerading as information related to the Règlement General sur la Protection des Données or the European Union's General Data Protection Aid regulations. Upon enabling the macro in the bait document, it fetches an image from a remote URL. I'm not going to read that to you. Um, encoded PowerShell scripts hidden in the image uh, using a steganography. 
The Chocolatey, Chocolatey utility is used to install the Python package installer pip that in turn installs the PySox proxy library. Next, the script fetches another image file, I'm not going to read it to you, which contains a base64 encoded Python script also hidden using steganography, and saves the Python script as Microsoft Security Update.py. The script then creates and executes a .bat file that in turn executes the Python script, which is the serpent backdoor. The malware then uses PySox to connect to the command, command line paste bin tool uh, term bin, pastes the output to a bin, and receives the bin's unique URL. Finally, the malware sends a request to the answer server, the second onion pet URL, including the hostname and bin URL in the header, continues the report. This allows the attacker to monitor the bin outputs via the answer URL and see what the infected host's response was. The malware cycles through this process indefinitely. The steganographic images used in the attack are both hosted on a Jamaican credit union website. That's a new one. The next hack for Lapsus was the company Okta. The gang announced the alleged hack through its Telegram channel and shared a series of screenshots as proof of the hack. Some of the images published by the threat actors appear to be related to the company's customer data. The message published by the, by the group claims that the gang had super user and admin access to multiple systems of the company. The company is investigating claims of a data breach, which, if confirmed, could pose serious risk to the customers of the company. Okta is aware of the reports and it's currently investigating, states a spokesperson for the company. We will provide updates as more information becomes available. Todd McKinnon, CEO at Okta, confirmed that in late January 2022, the company detected an attempt to compromise the account of a third-party customer support engineer working for one of its sub-processors. A, an attempt? Detected an attempt to compromise? Well, I mean, I think so far the proof has shown that, that they had um, compromised, but Whatever. McKinnon added that there is no evidence of ongoing malicious activity that resulted from the activity detected in January. I beg to differ, but we'll see. HP issued a security bulletin warning of a buffer overflow vulnerability track to CVE 2022-3942 with a CVSS score of 8.4. That could lead to remote code execution on vulnerable devices. Certain HP print products and digital sending products may be vulnerable to potential remote code execution and buffer overflow with use of link local multicast name resolution or LLMNR, concludes the advisory. HP already addressed the flaw with the release of firmware security updates for the majority of the affected devices. HP also published mitigations for this issue. The company suggests, it's, uh, suggests disabling LLMNR multicast, uh, sorry, link local multicast name resolution. The IT giant published a separate security bulletin about three vulnerabilities, two rated as critical, CV 2022-24292 with a, a CVSS score of 9.8, and CV 2022-24293 um, with a CVSS score of 9.8, and one as as high severity, CV 2022-24291 with a CVSS score of 7.5. The flaws could be exploited uh, for information disclosure, game remote code execution, and triggered a denial of service condition respectively. HP again has addressed all the issues with the release of printer firmware for some of the impacted models. The popular anonymous hacktivist collective was very busy. They recently declared war on all companies that decided to continue to operate in Russia by paying taxes to the Russian government. Nestle is one of the companies that is still operating in Russia after the invasion and anonymous first threatened the company, then they hacked it. Today, the group of... or. Last week, the group of hacktivists announced to have hacked Nestle and leaked 10 gigabytes of sensitive data, including company emails, passwords, and data related to business customers. At the time of the writing, the group only leaked a sample of data containing more than 50,000 Nestle business customers. Nestle declared that it has decided to continue to operate in Russia because it will not profit from its operations there. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmyhal spoke with Nestle CEO Mark Schneider about the side effect of remaining in Russian market. Internet search engine Census reported that QNAP devices were targeted in a new wave of deadbolt ransomware attacks. Since January, deadbolt ransomware operators are targeting QNAP NAS devices worldwide. Its operators claim the availability of a zero-day exploit that allows them to encrypt the content of the infected systems. <coughs> Once encrypted, the content of the device, the ransomware pens deadbolt extension to the name of the exerted files and defaces the login page of the QNAP NAS displayed the following message. You've been hacked and blah, 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 pay me money, whatever. The hijacked QNAP login screen displays a ransom note demanding the payment of .0.03 Bitcoin, which is roughly $1,277, to receive a decryption key to recover the files. 
The Ransom Note also includes a link titled Important Message for QNAP, which points to a page that offers technical details of the alleged zero-day vulnerability in QNAP NAS devices for 5 Bitcoin, approximately 212,000. Ransom operators are also offering for sale the QNAP Master Decryptor, again, a key for 50 Bitcoin, which could allow all the victims of this ransomware family to decrypt the files. At the end of January, QNAP forced the firmware update for its network-attached storage devices to protect its customers against the deadbolt ransomware. In February, storage solutions provider Asuster warned its customers of a wave of deadbolt ransomware attacks targeting its NAS devices. New census reported that the number of QNAP devices infected with deadbolt peaked in January, January 26. Around 5,000 of the 130,000 QNAP NAS devices exposed online were infected by ransomware. So 5,000 infected times 1,270 bucks each. It's a lot of money. Fortunately, the number of infections raised again over the past few days. Oh, so you can increase that 5,000. And querying the cent, uh, census internet search engines, they determined <coughs> there are cur currently there are 1,308 infected QNAP devices. In late 2021, Volexity researchers investigated an intrusion in an environment they were monitoring and discovered a MacBook Pro running macOS 11.6 Big Sur that was compromised with a previously unknown macOS malware tracked as gimmick. The researchers explained that they have discovered Windows versions of the same implant during the past investigations. The experts attribute the intrusion to a China-linked app group tracked as StormCloud, which is known to target organizations across Asia. The macOS version of the implant is written primarily in Objective-C, while the Windows ones are both in .NET and Delphi. The implant uses public cloud hosting services such as Google Drive for command and control to evade detection. Volexity worked with Apple to implement protections for the gimmick implant on March 17, 2022. Apple pushed new signatures to XProtect and MRT to remove the malware. Gimmick should be launched directly by a user rather than a daemon. Then it installs itself as a launch agent by dropping a plist file with contents. During the initialization, the implant analyzed by the experts decodes several pieces of data used by the implant for its operation using a rotating additional a addition algorithm. The implant also supports an uninstall function accessible by adding the argument uninstall on the command line. The command instructs the malicious code on removing itself and all associated files, and then kills the process. StormCloud is an advanced and versatile threat actor, adopting, to, adopting its tool to set to, set to match different operating systems used by its targets, concludes the analysis published by the experts. The work involved in porting this malware and adapting its systems to a new operating system, in this case macOS, is no light undertaking that suggests the threat actor behind it is well-resourced, adept, and versatile. UK CERT UA continues to observe malware-based attacks aimed at Ukraine organizations. In a recent alert, it warned of attacks employing a wiper dubbed Double Zero. The government CERT started observing this campaign on March 17, 2022. Threat actors launched spear phishing attacks using malicious archives. The archive contains an obfuscated .NET program. Experts tracked it as Double Zero, and the analysis revealed it was developed to destroy the infected system. Double Zero Wipe Files uses two techniques, overwriting the content with zero blocks of 4096 bytes using the file stream.write or using API calls ntfile open NTF file, ntfs control file. The malware deletes the following Windows registries, HKCU, HKU, HKLM, HKLM slash BCD, before shutting down the infected system. The activity is tracked by the UAC, uh, the UAC 0088 identifier and is directly related to attempts to violate the regular mode of operation of information systems of Ukraine enterprises. Anonymous continues to target Russian government organizations and private businesses. Now it is claiming to have hacked the Central Bank of Russia. The popular hacker collective claims to have compromised the systems of the Central Bank of Russia and stolen 35,000 files and announced that will leak it in within 48 hours. Since the start of the Russian invasion of the Ukraine on February 24th, Anonymous has declared war on Russia and launched multiple cyber attacks against Russian entities, including Russian government sites, state-run media websites, and energy firms. Anonymous recently declared war on all the companies that decided to continue to operate in Russia by paying taxes to the Russian government, and hence we, we can recall the story I just read about Nestle. Uh, okay, here we go. Nestle is one of the companies that is still operating in Russia after the invasion, and Anonymous first threatened the company, but then they hacked them. 
a researcher has identified critical vulnerabilities that can allegedly be exploited by remotely um, hacking a building controller predominantly used by organizations in Russia. Researcher Jose Bertin discovered critical flaws affecting a controller made by a Russian company, Tekon Avtomatika, which is widely used by organizations in Russia. Tekon Avtomatika, Avtomatika is an equipment supplier company dispatching elevators and buildings, water and heat metering. Querying the Shodan search engine, Bertin discovered more than 117 devices connected to the internet located in Russia that are running with default credentials. The expert explained that anyone can access the internet-facing systems and perform changes and actions as admin only. The expert found the default credentials, default credentials are admin uh, secret, in manuals, firmware, and software for its building controller modules. The researcher demonstrated that using default credentials could gain admin privileges to the user interface of the Tekon building controller. Um, he was uh, also able to execute code with root privileges by abusing a feature implementing implemented by the vendor to allow users to upload their custom LUA scripts and plugins through a section of the UI. Upon clicking the save load button, the uploaded code will be executed. The researcher created a proof of concept script that allowed him to obtain root privileges and take complete control of the targeted device and potentially cause significant disruption. The expert published a blog post that describes a step-by-step -step procedure to achieve remote code execution with root privileges. Well, I got RCE and privilege escalation from an admin user to root. Now we can do whatever. More critically, those devices can be uh, uh, shut down at once. The 100 creating an impact in Russian SCADA systems remotely, wrote the expert. From this point, now we can create custom CGI files and call them from CGI slash bin path and do whatever. Since the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine on February 24th, Anonymous has declared war on Russia. This is the third time I've said this. And launched multiple cyber attacks against Russian entities, including Russian government sites, state-run media sites, and energy firms. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anonymous recently declared war on all companies that decided to continue to operate in Russia by paying taxes to the Russian government, like Nestle. The first company hacked by the collective, for this reason, was Nestle. An anonymous first threatened the company, then hacked it. The activists claim to have stolen 10 gigabytes of sensitive data, including company emails, passwords, and data related to business customers. The group leaked a sample of data containing more than 50,000 Nestle business customers. Today, the Twitter account Anonymous TV announced the start of an offensive against the companies that opted to continue operating in Russia. The hacktivists have launched powerful distributed denial of service attacks against the Russian websites of Alchen, Leroy Merlin, and Decathlon, bringing them down. The tweet includes a screenshot showing that the targeted sites are not reachable. Ukraine CERT published technical details about a malicious activity tracked as UIC0026, which Sentinel Labs associated with China-linked Skyrub Apt. Skyrub Apt was first spotted in 2015, but experts believe it has been active since at least 2012, conducting surgical attacks against a, a small number of individuals across the world, including Russia and the United States. Scarab has conducted multiple cyber espionage campaigns over the years. It employed the custom backdoor Ciron and later the header tip implant. Experts pointed out that the UIC0026 activity is the first public example of a Chinese threat actor targeting Ukraine since the beginning of the invasion. The attacker spread their malware through phishing messages using weaponized documents that deploy the header tip malware. The messages use a rare archive titled On the Preservation of Video Recordings of the Criminal Action Actions of the Army of the Russian Federation. Rare, which included an executable with the same name. The lure document employed in the campaign spotted by Cert UA mimics the National Police of the Ukraine. Sentinel Lab experts analyzed the infrastructure used by Scarab and several samples of the header tip malware shared by Cert UA. The analysis of metadata associated with lure documents suggests the author is using the Windows operating system in a Chinese language setting. The header tip samples employed by threat actors are 32-bit DLL files written in C++. Experts reported that the header tip malware implements backdoor capabilities and can also be used as a first-stage malware. Conclusion we assess with high confidence the recent CERT UA activity attributed to UAC0026 is the Scarab Apt Group and represents the first publicly reported attack on Ukraine from a non-Russian apt, concludes Sentinel-1. The header tip malware and associated phishing campaign utilizing macro-enabled documents appears to be a first-stage infection attempt. At this point in time, the threat actor's further objectives and motivations remain unclear. We now move on to other security news. 
Italy's data privacy watchdog has launched an investigation into potential risks associated with the use of the Kaspersky antivirus. The Italian authority aims at verifying how the Russian company processes the data of Italian users and whether it transfers the collected information outside the EU, including Russia. The watchdog asks Kaspersky Lab to provide the number and type of Italian customers, as well as detailed information on the way the company's solutions process the personal data of the users. The agency also requests Kaspersky Lab to indicate the number of requests from government authorities of third countries for acquisition or communication of personal data for Italian entities. Kaspersky must provide data related to the request submitted from uh, January 1st, 2021, distinguishing them by country and indicating how many of them were served by the Russian firm. The announcement follows the recommendation issued by Italy's cybersecurity agency, ACN, to diversify the use of Russian software warning of a potential technological risk following the ongoing invasion of the Ukraine. Recently, Germany's cybersecurity agency, BSI, recommended consumers uninstall Kaspersky antivirus software. The agency warns the cybersecurity firm could be implicated in hacking attacks during the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. The FBI's warning, or is warning, energy companies of the risks of cyber attacks carried out by Russia-linked threat actors reported by the Associated Press. The Associated Press has access to a security advisory issued by the FBI that reports that Russia-linked threat actors have conducted a reconnaissance activity aimed at first at least five energy companies. The same attackers also targeted at least 18 other companies in multiple industries, including the defense industry, industrial base and financial services. The advisory does name... Uh, any of the, doesn't name any of the companies probed by Russian hackers. The advisory reports scanning activities on the network of the companies, which could indicate that threat actors are gathering information to use in their later attacks. Earlier, the White House announced that there were ongoing activities that suggest Russia was probing U.S. critical infrastructure to launch cyber attacks. Biden announced that the administration has issued new warnings that, based on evolving intelligence, Russia may be planning a cyber attack against the U.S. The magnitude of Russia's cyber capacity is fairly consequential, and it's coming. The advisory issued by the FBI includes 140 IP addresses associated with the scanning of the U.S. critical infrastructure since at least March 2021. These IP addresses have been associated with the active exploitation of a foreign victim, which resulted in destruction of the victim's systems. That scanning activity has increased since the beginning of the Ukraine invasion, leading to a greater possibility of future intrusions. The U.S. has indicted four Russian government employees for the role in cyber attacks targeting hundreds of companies and organizations in the energy sector worldwide between 2012 and 2018. The two indictments, one from June 2021 and one from August 2021, are charging one employee of the Russian Federation, uh, Federation Central Scientific Research Institute of Chemistry and Mechanics and three officers of Russia's Federal Security Service. According to the June 2021 indictment, an employee of the Russian Ministry of Defense Research Institute, Evgeny Viktorovich Gladkik, and his co-conspirators attempted to damage critical infrastructure outside the U.S. The attacks caused two separate emergency shutdowns at a foreign targeted facility. The group also attempted to hack the systems of a U.S. company operating critical infrastructure in the United States. On August 2021, the U.S. DOJ charged three FSB officers, Pavel Alexandrovich Akulov, Mikhail Mikhailovich Gavrilov, and Marat Valeryevich Tyokov, working in Military Unit 71330, or Center 16, a.k.a. Dragonfly, Berserk Bear, Energetic Bear, and Crouching Yeti. Between 2012 and 2017, the Dragonfly app conducted multiple attacks targeting ICS, or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition Systems, used in the energy industry, including oil and gas firms and nuclear power plants, as well as utility and power transmission companies. According to the indictment, the, co the campaigns against the energy sector campaign involved two phases. The first phase, which took place between 2012 and 2014, the nation-state actor was tracked as Dragonfly, or HAVEX, and engaged in a supply chain attack, compromised OT network systems manufacturers and software providers deploying the Havex implant. The attackers also launched spear phishing and watering hole attacks that allowed them to install more on more than one on 17,000 unique devices in the United States and abroad, including controllers used by power and energy companies. 
In the second phase, which took place between 2014 and 2017, the app group tracked as Dragonfly 2.0 focused on more targeted attacks on specific energy sector entities and individuals and engineers who worked with ICS slash SCADA systems. The group targeted more than 3,300 users and more than 500 U.S. and international companies and entities, in addition to U.S. government agencies such as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. In some cases, the spear phishing attacks were successful, including in the compromise of the business network, i.e. involving computers not directly connected to ICS and SCADA equipment. Of the Wolf Creek Nuclear Operating Corporation, or Wolf Creek, in Burlington, Kansas, which operates a nuclear power plant. Moreover, after establishing an illegal foothold in a particular network, the conspirators typically use that foothold to penetrate further into the network by obtaining access to other computers and networks at the victim entity. DOJ warns of attacks from Russian-linked app groups against critical infrastructure on a global scale. CISA, the FBI, and the U.S. Department of Energy also published a joint cybersecurity advisory detailing tactics, techniques, and procedures, or TTPs, uh, uh, of indicted state-sponsored uh, Russian-linked uh, threat actors. The city of London police announced to have arrested seven teenagers suspected of being members of the notorious Lapsus extortion gang, which is believed to be based in South America. Four researchers investigating the hacking group Lapsus on behalf of companies that were attacked said they believe the teenager is the mastermind, states Bloomberg, that first reported the news. Lapsus has befuddled cybersecurity experts as it has embarked on a rampage of high-profile hacks. Over the last months, the Lapsus gang compromised many prominent companies such as NVIDIA, Samsung, Ubisoft, Mercado, Libre, Vodafone. This week, the group announced the hack of Microsoft and Okta. The father of a 16-year-old from Oxford that was identified by law enforcement told the BBC his family was concerned and was trying to keep him away from his computers. I had never heard about any of this until recently. He's never talked about any hacking, but he is very good on computers and spends a lot of time on the computer. I always thought he was playing games, the boy's father told the BBC. We're going to try to stop him from going on computers. The youngster that goes online with the moniker White or Breach Base has, a, has autism. For this reason, he attends a special education school in Oxford. The teenager, who can't be named for legal reasons, attends a special education school in Oxford. Seven people between the ages of 16 and 21 have been arrested in connection with an investigation into a hacking group. They have all been released under investigation... Uh, their inquiries remain ongoing, the City of London Police said. The teenager had, was identified after his identity was revealed, or he was doxxed on a hacking forum after an apparent falling out with business partners. Security investigator Brian Krebs reported that the teenager purchased Doxbin last year, a platform used for doing activities. Then, he gave up control of the site in January and leaked the entire Doxbin archive to Telegram. Clearly, the hacking community behind Doxbin retaliated by releasing White's personal information, including his home address, social media photos, and details about his parents. Nixon said that in January 2022, White, uh, White, Doxbin, White dot Doxbin reluctantly agreed to uh, relinquish control over Doxbin, selling the forum back to its previous owner at a considerable loss. However, just before giving up the forum... White Doxbin leaked the entire Doxbin data set, including private doxes uh, that had remained unpublished on the site as drafts to the public via Telegram. States Krebs, who, who cited the investigation conducted by Allison Nixon, chief researcher at Unit uh, 221B, the Doxbin community responded ferociously, posting on White Doxbin uh, perhaps the most thorough dox the community had ever produced, including videos supposedly shot at, at night outside his home in the United Kingdom. According to the Post, White amassed 300 Bitcoin during his cybercrime career. After a few years, his net worth accumulated to well over 300 uh, Bitcoin, um, close to $40 million. He is now affiliated with the wannabe ransomware group known as Lapsus, um, who has been uh, extorting and hacking several organizations um, states the post. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.